Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. We are going to deep dive into Eddie Van Halen's Frankenstrat guitar. Um, Eddie Van Halen is the guitarist that made me want to even pick up a guitar in the first place. So we're going to dive out into these. I'm going to play some Van Halen riffs. I don't, trust me, I don't know how to play these riffs note for note. I'm just having some fun with it. So, you know, if, if you uh, want to complain about me not playing stuff note for note, <laughs> you could, bro. All kidding aside, you guys have been really digging these style of videos, and I want to keep making them. And there were just so many things that I didn't know about Eddie's original guitar that I learned. I'm just going to share a few. There were a lot of them. I'm not going to go too far. But uh, in the comments, if you want maybe a part two, let me know some of the stuff that you know about Eddie's guitar. I read a thousand articles about this stuff. So let's just go ahead and jump on into it. <laughs> All right, so number one, and one I had already known, but I thought a lot of people might not be aware of this, is the actual pickup that Eddie put in his guitar. You know, Eddie is, of course, famously known for crossing uh, Strat with a Les Paul, giving you a Super Strat. But the pickup that he actually used was from his 60s 335. There's not a lot of information about his 335 necessarily, but the pickup that he used, the humbucker anyways, was from his 335, not a Les Paul. Uh, he had a Les Paul, but it was actually a gold top with P90s, which he later did, you know, did route it out and put a humbucker in it. But um, anyways, he put this pickup in there, and to solve kind of the issue he, he said he was having with all this feedback and whining of the pickup, he actually put it, and I don't know how to pronounce it, par paraffin wax? Maybe, I, I definitely, I'll put the words up on the screen, I'm definitely saying it wrong. But he uh, put it in wax, and that solved a lot of those issues of the feedback. It was really, really interesting that he took a you know, 335 pickup, put it in the Super Strat, and that's really where that humbucker came from. So while we're on the topic of the pickup, we we're going to talk about why he angled it. Now, I've, I'd always seen angled bridge pickups and a lot of guitars. I was always told it was for tonal reasons, which, you know, Eddie could have totally just enjoyed that tone more. But um, part of the reason why he angled it the way it was is because he was essentially taking a Gibson pickup for Gibson space strings and all that, and he put it in a strap. So he angled it so it would actually fit the different scales of the, not the scale length, but you know, the width of the strings from a strap, which he, it was a boogie body. So it's like not a strap strap, but I'm going to call it a strap. And uh, that's why he angled the pickup. It was, it was because of the string spacing, because the pickup was for a Les Paul and he had it in essentially a strap. <laughs> Now, this one, of course, being a Van Halen nerd, uh, I knew about, but I think a lot of people don't realize this, and or at least don't know it, is that the white and black guitar uh, that Eddie had is the red and black guitar. <laughs> They're the exact same guitar. Uh, essentially, Eddie, after tour, he took his black and white one, repainted it red, uh, but the big difference is he took the pickguard off. If you look at the original one, it has a full pickguard on it, and Eddie said he just didn't like the way that it looked because the pickguard that big black pickguard covered up most of the paint and he wanted to show off the, you know, the paint stripes on it. So he cut the pickguard and made it in that tiny little sliver uh, that you see on it. And that was really it. It's the same guitar. Like a lot of people think it's a different guitar, but it's actually the same one. So it's another like mod that, that he did. It might not seem like a, a tonal mod, but painted it, same guitar. People think there's two of these. It, it's the same one. Now the yellow one is different, but that, that's for another video. Now, something that I had never noticed, I never knew what it was, and I absolutely love that I know what this is now. So if you look at his 
you know, it, I, again, it's the same guitar, but the red and black and white version of Eddie's guitar, which has that little bit of a pickguard on there, you'll see a space for a pickup selector. Well, I never realized there is no pickup selector there, because obviously, you know, again, a very commonly known thing is that neck pickup on his guitars doesn't work. He, um, he had said that he couldn't figure out how to wire it to get it to work, so it was basically a dummy pickup just there to fill the spot. But if you look at his pick art, I never realized there's no selector switch. And I've always wondered what was the, you know, pickup looking thing, whatever you want to call it, in the middle position. That's his toggle switch. He put his toggle switch in the middle pickup position of the actual guitar. I never knew that. Now, as soon as I read that, I'm like, of course, like, it looks like it now. I see it. I, now I can't unsee it. But I thought that was so cool. I never realized that there was no toggle switch in the pit guard. There's one in the middle. I, I don't know, like the whole thing. I just love that Eddie was just like, he said, you know, he was never concerned about looks necessarily. It was functionality. So he didn't care that it looked funky, which I think looks cool. But, you know, with the actual toggle switch in the middle position, so he just put it there. It was about functionality. He, he only one pickup worked. He couldn't switch anyway. So he probably just locked it in the one position and, uh, screwed it or, you know, stapled it into the body and just called it done. Now, one that has always gotten a lot of uh, interest and debate, and I actually didn't know what the reasoning for this was. I just always knew he had a, I believe a 1971 quarter on his guitar. And what I found out that I thought was really cool is essentially his functionality for it. Now, and this is one, like I said, there were so many sites saying different things. This is the one that just seemed the most logical to me and interesting, because it made sense. Now, if you look at it, there's these different holes drilled in it. And the reason he had that quarter there was because once he put his Floyd Rose, on the guitar, he had that quarter there, that way the Floyd Rose would sit flush against the body. Because uh, essentially he was installing a Floyd on a guitar that wasn't routed for a Floyd. So he would put that there and it would keep the Floyd flush with the body, keep it flat anyways. And uh, what I had read from someone mentioning, and again, I don't know if this is true, but it seemed like a really cool idea, is he would, he had the screws pretty loose so he could spin the quarter around. Because if you look at the picture, like I said, I'll put them up on the screen, you can see how he would essentially, you know, spin that uh, quarter and it would fit right under the edge of the bridge. So he could have it, you know, so you could pull up or you could not pull up. It was basically like a, almost a locking tremolo system. Um, it said that he didn't, it didn't work the best live. So he actually ended up not using it. I think he just ended up screwing it down so the quarter wouldn't move. But what a cool, again, he, he's just a genius. He. He's just constantly like thinking of stuff. So I don't know, this stuff was really fascinating to me. So what I'm gonna end this video with is his original tremolo system was from a 68 Strat. And uh, tremolo arm, all that stuff. I think the tremolo arm was, would be the same one from his Strat. But what I always wondered is how did he get it to stay in tune? Like how did he get that guitar to stay in tune? Because you know, this was before Floyd Rose was a thing. You know, Floyd Rose didn't just exist. Like, he was doing this all with a Strat tremolo, which, you know, those are hard to keep in tune. But, so what he did, and, and like I said, there, there was more, there was a couple things I didn't understand about how they said he was twisting the strings that I didn't get, so maybe someone knows that. But essentially, he would um, oil the nut, and then oil the string trees and all, and all that kind of stuff, and he would wind the strings. Like, a lot of times when you put strings on a guitar, you wind where you know the string goes into the um, to the tuning peg. We wind down. Well, Eddie wound up. That way, there was less of an angle, so it was more of a straight pull on the strings. Now, it also said that he boiled his strings. That way, they would pre-stretch, so there was you know they were already kind of stretched out and ready to go. And then they mentioned the way he wrapped them or twisted the strings. I didn't understand what they were saying that he did, but. I don't know, the whole thing was extremely fascinating. I'm just like, who thinks of this stuff? Like, true innovator. I mean, man, he was just, he's just the dude when it comes to guitar. It's so many things. So much respect for Eddie. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So there you guys have it. Like I said, of course, and you can deep dive into this. Like I said, the body was not uh, an actual strap body. It was a boogie body, which I, I, I'm pretty sure was made by Wayne Charvel. Same, so was the neck. It had a bunch of different necks on it throughout the years. So to me, this was just such a good look into the, you know, just the way of how innovative Eddie is. I shouldn't say was, I think I said was, but is, it's not was, he is innovative. He's, he's still the man. He's still, in my opinion, the best guitar player who's ever lived. And uh, I couldn't thank him enough for all the inspiration over the years. So like I said, I just wanted to play some riffs, talk about it a little bit. Let me know what you know about Eddie's Frankenstrat guitar and maybe we'll do a part two. So until next time guys, Let's get your jam on and uh, yo, let's go.